Hello everyone and welcome to the video. So today is all about getting your development environment set up so you can start writing some F Sharp. We're going to go over the setup for Windows, Linux, and Mac. But before we get started, I want to talk about .NET Framework versus .NET Core because that's going to be important for the development environment setup. So basically in the past, when writing uh, C Sharp or F Sharp, uh, you would use the .NET Framework. And this .NET framework was only for Windows. We want to do cross-platform applications and let's say you want to host your application on a, on a, Linux, a Linux container, uh, we will have to use .NET Core. So we're going to be focusing on using .NET Core for these tutorials. Uh, feel free to use .NET full framework if you want. Also, if you want to write libraries that are compatible with both the .NET framework and .NET Core, you can use .NET standard class libraries. But for now, we're just going to install the .NET Core SDK on all three platforms. And we're going to work with three different IDs. So for Windows, I'm going to show you how to install and configure the Video Studio Community IDE, which is a very popular IDE if you're working in C Sharp. Most of you probably already have, already have it downloaded. Uh, for Linux, I'm going to show VS Code of Ionide, which is a big fan favorite, as I mentioned in my last video. And for Mac, I'm going to show how to install Rider, made by JetBrains. So I normally write code on Windows with uh, JetBrains Rider, which is you know, my personal favorite. But today I'm going to show all three. Um, it's important to know that Visual Studio is only available for Windows. Uh, so Visual Studio Community is only av available for Windows, uh, but the two other options, VS Code and Rider, are cross-platform. So even though I'm just going to show it for one platform, you can install it on all your platforms. One thing to keep in mind with the Windows installation is if you're going to use Visual Studio Community, you don't need to go on the Microsoft website and download the .NET Core SDK because you can select it in the Visual Studio Wizard. Uh, when, when installing Visual Studio Community. So it only has to be downloaded on its own if you're going to use either VS Code, uh, JetBrains Writer, or just uh, any other text editor. So let's get started. Okay, so for Windows, it's pretty basic. We're just going to go on Microsoft's website and download .NET Core SDK. Uh, which you can see, it's one of the first links there. I'm just going to download that. It's going to give us an executable. Uh, you basically go through the installer and uh, it's really straightforward. Once that's done, you can go ahead and go to the file system, create a new folder. In that new folder, you can create a new command prompt or PowerShell. And with the command .NET new console lang F sharp, that'll basically create a new template for a console application in F sharp. So then you just hit .NET run as a command and uh, it should, you should see hello world from F sharp and everything works, so you're all set. Okay, so to install Visual Studio Community, you basically go on the website that's linked in the description. Uh, go ahead and hit Community 2019. Uh, that'll take some time to download. And when you open up the wizard, you should see a window like this. This is the, the, the wizard. So you can select everything you want. And we want to make sure that we hit the .NET Core cross-platform development. Okay, so right here, I'm just going through the settings, just making sure I want, uh, if I want any extra stuff and just making sure that uh, .NET Core SDK 3.1 selected. And once that's all done, I'm gonna hit uh, continue or install. Yes, install. And uh, once that, when that's done, I'll get back to it. Okay, so once that's done, you can uh, hit launch and you'll get the main wizard. So you can go ahead here and create a new project. And we want to do a F-sharp console application on .NET Core here. So just make sure you get the right settings, give it a name, whatever. And I'll create a new uh, solution. I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with this wizard, but we're just going through it just for new people. Um, and I'll create a basic Hello World console application. Uh, right here, I hit Control F5 to run it, and I just make sure the result, uh, everything executes nicely. And as you can see, you get the hello world. So that's basically how to get set up on Windows. 
and we'll check out Linux right after this. Okay, so the installation on Linux is uh, pretty similar. And we're gonna go on the Microsoft website and download the .NET Core SDK. Uh, we're gonna use the, uh, the terminal for the software creation and Microsoft listed all the commands to run. So I'm basically just gonna be running through all the commands that are listed there. Make sure you have the right uh, release of uh, Linux and just so that you get the right commands. I'm using Ubuntu Mate 18.4. So it's just basically getting the repository, getting the package, uh, installing the package, and just making sure everything works. So I'm just gonna be running some terminal commands here. Just gonna wait for myself. Okay, so now that's installed, you can just go ahead and run .NET just to see if it's installed, .NET version to see what the version is. And we can go ahead and create a new folder and create a new .NET console application. So I'm just making a directory here, I'm going into that directory and doing .NET new console lang F sharp. Same command on all three platforms, which is great. Uh, you can see I'm building, it's generating all of the code and then you can hit .NET run. .NET run will execute the code. Well, it will compile it also. And there you go. Now, before I get started installing Visual Studio Code with Ionide on Linux, there's a few details I wanna mention. Uh, there's a few settings at the end of Ionide that we need to change if we're gonna use .NET Core and we don't have Mono installed. Mono is a whole other thing. If you don't know about it, we'll put that to the side. Uh, so make sure you stick to the end where I'm gonna update the settings. I also wanna mention that at the recording of this video, I had some issues with the f -sharp interactive window in, uh, in Ionide, with the Ionide extension. Uh, the linter wasn't working very well. I was saying that some DLLs were not found. So I went to go check on GitHub and effectively it's a, there's, there's an open issue there. And so if you wanna use another ID for now, we can go ahead or we can try a previous version of Ionide. But, on Windows, it works well. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go on the Visual Studio Code website and uh, download the package. I'm on Ubuntu, so I'm gonna get the .deb. And uh, while that installs, I really skip forward here. It's a lot of install, downloading and stuff. Um, when you hit the package, just hit install. It's pretty straightforward, to be honest, uh, this part. Um, but who knows? Okay, so when that's downloaded, you can go ahead and uh, open up uh, code. And uh, we're gonna look for the Ionide plugin in the marketplace. I believe the official name is called Ionide-F-Sharp. So you can go ahead and install that. I do believe it re requires a reload once you do it. Um, and after you do it, uh, you can open up a terminal with uh, control shift back tip. I'll hook it up on the screen. You can also go in uh, tools. And in the terminal now, we can go ahead and go to the folder we just created with the .NET new console. We can open up that project, see what it looks like. And uh, we can go ahead and edit the source code uh, once everything loads up, just to make sure everything uh, works well. Probably won't have any issues. Just gonna slap on, on Linux in there and uh, hit .NET run. Also showing you where you can hit the new uh, terminal. Control shift back tick is gonna be a good shortcut if you use uh, VS code. And so .NET run, you're gonna see the result and it's gonna work. And so we're all set up. So here's the part where I edit the extension settings. So the first setting we want to check is called F SAC runtime, which is F sharp autocomplete runtime, I believe. And we wanna make sure that's net core and not net, so .net and .net core. And the other one is use SDK scripts. And that's just gonna tell 
Ionide to use the appropriate uh, command to run the F# -sharp interactive. So I want to use .NET FSI and not uh, FSI.exe. All right, lastly for Mac, we're going to do the same thing as the other two. We're going to go on the Microsoft website and install the .NET Core SDK. Um, it's very straightforward, it's a little bit like Windows. Just install wait. And when it's downloaded, just go ahead and hit it. And fun fact, my OBS just crashed there, but just trust me, it's a straight, straightforward operation. You can go ahead and open the terminal. In the terminal, uh, go create a new folder. Um, once you hit that new folder, you can test out the .NET, .NET version, just make sure everything's nice and great. And then you can uh, hit .NET new console lang F sharp to create a new console application with F sharp. Just make sure that's running. All right, seems to be working good. Once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and hit .NET run so we can run the application, build it. See the output is good. I'm a lot slower on Mac for some reason, I don't know. Cool. So we get the hello world from F sharp. So next we're gonna check out Rider. Now to install Rider, it's basically the same process. We're gonna go on, just hit the link in the description and we're gonna download it. It's gonna take some time to download. Luckily with the speed of editing, it's gonna take no time at all. And once that's done, you can go ahead and run the package. Okay, so go ahead and open it. And there's gonna be a initial wizard here just to select the theme that you want and uh, the color scheme and stuff, the options. Um, I'm a big fan of Visual Studio, so I just kept all those bindings. And dark theme, of course, dark theme for life. You know, talking about. Uh, let's go ahead and select dark theme or whatever theme you want. The key map, I use Visual Studio because I used ReSharper for about three years. Uh, now, what's nice is it comes with the F# -sharp plugin, which is really cool. And go next, 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 and you can evaluate for free. Uh, Writer is a paid software, but students and uh, there's a lot of people who can benefit, benefit benefit from it for free. So you can check out on the IntelliJ on sorry on the JetBrains website. Just to make sure you're legible. Uh, I'm gonna gladly pay for it. I really think it's great. So go ahead and open up the uh, project which generated uh, previously with the uh, .NET uh, CLI. Once that's open, you'll see an IDE, a uh, nice window. Uh, took me a while to figure out how to uh, zoom with Mac because I never used Mac. <laughs> uh, but you don't get to see that with the editing, that's great. And we're gonna go ahead and run this in the terminal just to make sure uh, everything works well. I'm gonna edit the string just to make sure I didn't cheat. And uh, hit save, hit .NET run, and uh, we should be good to go. Great. All right, so that's it. All right, this was it for this video. I hope this helped you get started with F Sharp. And in the next video, we're gonna go through all the basics of the language itself. We're gonna actually start coding now. So that's gonna be pretty exciting. Should be a pretty long video. I'm gonna try to hit all the basics and uh, I'm gonna try to focus on the, the, the good practices from the start, just to make sure uh, you're not using uh, old OOP thinking. And so uh, make sure you hit subscribe to get notified for that video first. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And if you have any questions or feedback, for this video or upcoming videos, make sure to leave a comment. Uh, I'm gonna read all of them, obviously. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.